Recently in Görlitz, Germany, Siemens brought us out and gave us a tour of their facility and part of which included some really cool additive manufacturing things. But also we got to take a tour of the steam turbine assembly area. These are 60 and 70 ton massive things hanging over your head on stilts, being worked on, and eventually providing power for hundreds of thousands of people. It's super nerdy how they get to do all this, and we got to talk to Detlef about it. Let's get nerdy. Hey, Detlef. Hey, John. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for inviting me out to Siemens. This is fantastic. Sure. Welcome to our industrial steam turbines facility uh, in Görlitz. Industrial steam turbines. That is, yes. that is that is a big term right there. What exactly is an industrial steam turbine? That is very cool stuff. We, <laughs> uh, we produce industrial steam turbines from a few hundreds of kilowatts of output power up to 250 megawatts. 250 megawatts is enough to power uh, a city of uh, 300,000 uh, inhabitants. 300,000? Yes, with you, one steam from turbine. one steam turbine. Correct. But I guess not all steam turbines are large like that. No, you have a big variety of industrial steam turbines. Like I said, it's from very small output powers to uh, to the 250 megawatts, and they have really they they come from very they start from very tiny uh, sizes to the big ones you see here in the assembly factory assembly hall. This the factory is huge, and these steam turbines are massive. This yes. is crazy. What what sort of applications are used here? Where where would this get installed? Yeah, they get installed worldwide, so to say, wherever you have a need for power, uh, wherever you have waste heat uh, available, wherever you have, for example, concentrated solar heat available, or metal industry, chemical industry, wherever you have heat available and the demand for power, uh, this is where you can think of industrial steam turbines. Wow, that's kind of cool. How yes, do you is. work with these such massive machines in here? It, it, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Uh, let's say it's a long process to uh, create uh, the, the steam turbine from the order to the delivery. You have to, uh, to, so to do the engineering, you have to do the sourcing of the major components like the rotors, like the casings, the, the production, you produce all the blades. Um, and all the small and medium sized parts. And then you have to finally assemble it in the final assembly hall, like here. Well, the blades you're talking about, those are spinning around really fast, right? Yeah, you know it, you know it. Uh, they are spinning um, with uh, speeds up to 500 meters per second. That's fast. That's, that's faster <laughs> than your call when you try to... Oh, sure. <laughs> But that's, I mean, 500 meters per second, that's faster than the speed of sound, right? Correct, correct. Yes, it is. It's faster than the speed of sound. That's incredible. So we're talking about things that are going around faster than the speed of sound. Correct. And they're doing that 24 hours a day, sure. seven days a week, yes. for years. For years. For example, 25,000 hours. Then you do a stop and then you look at them and then you restart and... Uh, Overall, the blades are made, or the industrial steam turbines are made for like 40 years. Jeez. Well, there is a lot going on down there right yes. behind us. Are, can you show me? Sure. Let's go. So, so in order to tell you how the steam turbine uh, is built up, what you see here is the rotor of the steam turbine. That's actually uh, the part which rotates and transfers the energy from the steam to mechanical energy. So this is what's inside that big giant case. Correct. Okay. Correct. And what you see is all the blades along this blade path, uh, they interact with uh, guide blades which are, uh, uh, which are on the stationary part and the steam will enter from here and drive the blades throughout the blade path uh, up to the oh. exhaust. So steam starts here. The steam starts and it, here and it's injected like here. Uh -huh. And here you see these uh, kind of seals. They prevent that steam goes the wrong way. We want the steam to perform <laughs> work and please go this direction. So how much pressure is on these blades initially? For the, for the high pressure turbines, the highest pressures we have in industrial steam turbines is 160 bars. So it's about 160 kilograms on the thumbnail. <laughs> That's a so, lot. That's a lot, right? And we're talking steam too, so what's the temperature that it the enters The temperature at? is uh, 560 degrees for a big steam turbine. The volume grows by a factor of 1,000. So you have one cubic centimeter will be 1,000 cubic centimeters at the end. That is why the blades get longer and longer to allow for bigger volume flow. 
Oh, I see. And because it's expanding, then we're dealing with lower pressures at the end. Correct. Uh, we ah. expand down to vacuum, down to 250 millibar absolute, for example, or down even to 150, 100 millibar absolute. And that's all from steam, just passing along. That's from along steam, this blade along, path. along, along, and so on. And here, what you see there, that's the last stage blades. Uh, and that are the that's uh, the last stage blades are the ones which rotate with up to uh, 500 meters per second. These are ones. These, these the last big, the big <laughs> ones. They are that fast. These are exceeding the speed of sound when they're they spinning. Do. They do. They do. Jeez. Uh, and however, if you see here, um, here the smaller ones. Also, you see this uh, the seal fins. They have a, they have a clearance of 0.4 millimeters, or in that round. Or, and the same here in the in the gap between the blade parts. Clearance meaning from the case, from the stator to the rotor, 0 0.4 ah. millimeters. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. That's like four sheets of paper. <laughs> the clearance will of course grow depending on the diameter. So on the larger blades, you will have bigger gaps. Uh, but we all we also tend to make the clearance as small as possible to have uh, highly efficient turbines and the steam not passing by. Right. The, the clearance just means that that prevents the steam from missing out on some work. You want the steam to work the entire path. Sure. Yes. That's the plan. <laughs> this is crazy because yeah. this, I mean, it's so large and obviously you imagine things are spinning on the inside of that case, but sure. I had no idea we were exceeding the speed of sound yes, at the end. Yes, and really, I had no idea about the pressures and being able to go down to such a low pressure at the end. So for me, it's a fascinating technology. Wow, I mean, for, this, is, this is an amazing technology. I have to ask, what's next then? What else, what else can we learn about these steam ah, turbines? Okay, so yeah, you're asking uh, because uh, we're looking at the future as well for industrial steam turbines. Absolutely. Um, and I think there is, um, um, it's not a coincidence that you're here because <laughs> we're talking about additive manufacturing uh, and I will be able to show you uh, to our additive manufacturing facility. We have a, a new machine here on site and I, th I think this will be very interesting to you. We're talking at 3D printing is actually sure. contributing to Siemens steam turbines. It will be, yes. Lead the way. Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks for coming along with us on that journey. Those steam turbines are incredible, and it's crazy to see the different ways they're used around the world. So a big thanks for watching it this far, and I really hope you enjoyed your time. I sure had a lot of fun bringing it to you. As always, we'll see you on the next one. Keep it nerdy.